Well, hi, guys. How are you doing? This is Pastor Sharon. Oh, wait a minute. I don't need this right now, do I? <laughs> I can just set this aside. Well, I hope you guys are doing fine. You had a great Easter. Sure do miss you. I wanted to let you know how the church is doing financially, right? Uh, before I do that, though, let me tell you two cool stories that I got just this past week. Uh, the first one was there was a family of four in our church that were members of our church, and, and uh, we received a call from, one of the, uh, from the wife, and she had said that they were going to be unwilling to tithe, and she wanted to tell us why, right? She talked to one of my pastors. And she said, you know, that their income had completely been cut off since the COVID-19. And so, of course, our pastors not only prayed with her, but we reached out. And so we were able to help her with the monetary gift and then food, right? So uh, come to find out this week, though, here's where the blessing is. This week, she tithed off the money that we had given her, right? And why that so blessed us is because she sees us as a family, and she knows that we're part of her, and she is part of us, her family. And then there was another uh, story that was just as cool. There was somebody in the community that had been tuning in to the, you know, to the live cast that we've been doing, and she, she had been in our church a long time ago, but she listened, and so she came came by when we weren't here and she had a letter and she kind of shoved it under the door right and in the letter she put a little bit of money and she said I don't have much but I'm so blessed by what you're doing I want to help your church so here's a little bit of cash for that and if you could like split that and put some in the COVID-19 fund I want to help them too right so I was like wow Lord is such a blessing you know with being able to cut back at non-essentials here at the church uh, and then scale back there. We are able each week to meet the bills that we have and to stay afloat. And it's because of your loving kindness and being able to, and your generosity and uh, blessing the church, right? And your tithes and your offerings. And we've had an abundance of pouring out of love to help the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, relief fund that we have here. And just, just so blessed, so blessed to have you guys on our team. Well, I want to remind everybody there are three ways to give, right? And they are, the first one, and the most popular, is that text to give at 45777. And you just type in VCC in the amount you want to give. And then, of course, the other two ways are the vineyardchurch.com. When you go on our website, big button, you can push that and it shows you how to contribute. And then the check, right? The banking online, you can just have a... The bank send us a check here or write one out like old-fashioned. We are receiving the, the mail even though we're closed to the public. All right, guys, those are some of the ways. And I just want you to know that we love you, we care about you, and I so deeply appreciate all your financial gifts that you've been sending. Now I'm going to turn you over to enjoy the rest of the service. Well, welcome to Vineyard Community Church. Uh, joining us, Church Online, we're so glad whether you're in your kitchen or in your bedroom or your living room, wherever you're at, I'm so glad that you could be part of what we're doing. We are starting a new series, Not Afraid. And there's a lot to be afraid of, certainly today. And so here we have, uh, we're wearing masks like this. Uh, nobody's here, so I'm um, uh, socially isolated, so I don't really need this. Uh, but we are wearing masks because uh, we're told to and there's uh, or certainly suggested and there's a lot of reasons to be afraid i was thinking the other day about uh the uh uh the time i was uh afraid with my family i was uh traveling in canada and we came across in niagara falls the city there this place that had like a scary walk through just a tourist trap right i mean we have those kinds of things here in our resort town and so we decided to go in me and my three boys that uh, we were young they were kids were younger then and uh, it was really really scary it was pitch dark uh, they had little exits along the way my youngest son took an exit because it was just so scary about two-thirds of the way in a car comes at us the lights turn on its engines are revved it's like gonna crush us turns out it's just a photo op but I'm like scared, I'm like throwing my kids in front of me. Here's the, here's the photo that they took. Here I am, I'm terrified. And uh, you know, every man for himself type of thing. And, uh, and, and so that was a scary event. Now that's just a, a, uh, a walkthrough that's 
you know, 10, 15 minutes. We are in a scary event today that is not just a 10 or 15 minute walkthrough. We're looking at months and months of a walkthrough and the photo op that they've given us for that is here. It's the SARS-CoV-2 is what it's called. That's the virus. The disease is COVID-19, the coronavirus. And there's certainly lots to be afraid of and scared with that. It certainly can disrupt our lives, our livelihood. It can harass us, cause us all kinds of complications, cause us to lose our job, lose money, all, all kinds of things. So that is something to be afraid of. I was uh, shopping in Harris Teeter, a grocery store uh, nearby, and uh, I wasn't close to the guy. I mean, I had my protective gear on, he had his on, but he was one of the employees and I wanted to ask where one of the products are. I was, I was a good six, seven, eight feet away and I, but, and I started to talk to him and he immediately backed up uh, and, he, and he said, hey, just stay right there. I mean, he's, he's, he's afraid. There is a lot of fear going on, not just here, but all around the globe. There's not a lot of peace. There's a lot of fear that's going on. And if we're going to trade our fear for God's peace, we're going to have to do what God says. He says, hey, he wants us to have that. Now, notice this verse. It says, anxious fear brings depression. That's what a lot of the world is in. They're in this place of anxious fear. But Jesus says, I leave behind with you peace. I give you my own peace and my gift. Notice that my gift is nothing like the peace of the world. Do not be uh, distressed or daunted. So notice here, he says that his peace is a gift. It's something he gives. It's not something you earn. It's not something you work for. You don't learn to do it. You, don't, you certainly can't buy it. It is something that is given and we receive it. It's God's gift to us. Jesus gives it to us. And then also he says it's different than the world. The world has a peace. See, in the world, you're at peace when, the, when everything's in order, when everything feels right, when everything's in its place, when there's chaos all around, there's no peace. The world's peace is external, but God says the peace he gives, it's internal and it's eternal. It's something that he does inside of us and it lasts and it's not conditional upon the outside. And so that's the kind of peace that Jesus offers. He offers you. He wants you to have that and so we're going to look at what the Bible says. Now, there's three things that when we see in Scripture, three things in order to get the peace. But before we do that, I want to look at some robbers of peace, peace robbers. First is worry. Worry, certainly. Anxiety is something that can rob us of peace. And there is a lot to worry about. So certainly, uh, we're all, we all have a propensity to worry, to fret over things. Uh, there's, we can worry about, will we get the coronavirus? Will one of our loved ones, you know, our kids, uh, our, our parents, our grandparents, uh, somebody who's in the most vulnerable category, somebody who's older or has underlining health conditions, certainly that's a concern. There's worries of, uh, will it affect uh, my job. I mean, what will happen to my work and, and uh, what will that look like when it's all over? I mean, there's worries with that. There's worries about church. Will my church be there when, uh, when this is all over? Uh, and let me just say to that, I want to speak to that worry right off the bat, if that's you. Uh, if Vineyard is your church, there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to worry about because uh, we are going to be here. God is our provider. He is our source. On top of that, we've been good stewards of the finances here. We're very, we've cut a lot of expenses during this time. We're also debt free. Uh, so we've, uh, we, we're in a very good, stable financial position. And probably most important of all, God has given us so many faithful servants that are faithfully giving even during this time. Because uh, they give to God. They recognize uh, that this is part of the way that they worship and they recognize God's number one in their life. And so for all of those reasons, uh, we're in a great place. And I'm so happy that God has provided that place. But it'll be here for you. But that's certainly a worry for some people. Will my church be there? Uh, another worry is, you know, nation, nationally. 
What about the trillions of dollars of debt that we're getting in and the, and the inflation that will come from that? And uh, there's a worry about that. There's a wor worry globally. What about the people uh, in the southern hemisphere? This virus will most likely travel down there. They're, they don't have the health care that the, that the uh, uh, industrialized nations have. Uh, they're uh, in poverty. They're uh, in, in compressed places demographically. Uh, it, it's, it could certainly do a lot of damage there. So when you start stacking all of that up, there's a lot to be worried about, and that's the heavy burden to carry. Worry weighs us down. It'll take our peace away from us. And so the, there's a lot of rationale. Hey, this is why I'm worrying, but worry will steal our peace. Another one, another robber of peace is disappointment. And again, plenty to be disappointed of. There's the, you know, if you're a concert goer, something in the water, 2020's canceled. Uh, the uh, Olympics 2020, the Summer Olympics is canceled. There's, there's events that are canceled. Our regional conference that we were doing, Max Influence, where we had uh, international speakers, and uh, that was super exciting for me, and I know a lot of us, and that's now canceled. And so there's uh, those things that are canceled. There's also people that have missed births because they can't be in the room. Uh, that th th when a woman was give has give been giving birth during this time, they won't let the father in. Uh, there's people that have missed funerals because you can only have 10 in, in a group. There's people that have missed graduations that will not come around again. They're just going to be putting a, a, a photo on Instagram or Facebook. That's, that's, that's about it. Or maybe a small little party. No more than 10. The people that have missed proms. All kinds of things that, that can cause us disappointment. I have a friend I play handball with. Uh, he called me up the other day and said his father, who lives in New York, he passed away from the coronavirus. He's in a place of loss and grief and disappointment. And so th there's a lot of disappointment to go around with what's going on, and that can rob us of peace. Unrelenting disappointment leaves you heartsick, especially when it's just unrelenting. You know, there's a guy in the Bible, uh, Jacob, he had unrelenting disappointment. W when he was young, his mom kind of coaxed him into doing some questionable uh, things that caused him to get kicked out of the home. He had to run for his life, really, never to see his parents again. They passed away. He wasn't around to see that. His brother uh, hated him for years and was out to kill him. And, and then he goes and he lives in a foreign land and, and he gets tricked. He, he thinks he's, you know, he's going to marry somebody he loves. Turns out it's not that person. And, uh, and that, that's disappointing for him. And then his, his only daughter, she ends up getting raped and that's a horrible disappointment for him. His wife that he loves dies in childbirth. That's a disappointment to him. His favorite son, Joseph, ends up being sold into slavery by his other sons. That's a terrible disappointment. Just one after another after another. That will rob us of our peace. And Jacob understood that. And many of us are starting to understand that because of some of the loss and the disappointments that we've had. And then there's loneliness. Loneliness can be a huge place where we lose our peace. And there's, uh, that, that can happen to all of us, certainly, regardless of your, of your marital status. But if you're single or if you live alone in your home or your apartment, that can be particularly difficult in this time when we're so uh, removed from people physically. I mean, I understand we're connected electronically, but you know, with older people, a lot of older people are alone. Their spouse has died, or for whatever reason, they're alone. And they, they, some of them can't even drive. Or if they can drive, they can't go to their favorite restaurant anymore, meet up with their friends, and their Bible study's been canceled, and, and, uh, and they, they, they have very few uh, connections with people. They can't go to church anymore. They don't know how to go online. That's a difficulty for them. If they have a child who comes by, they, the child won't hug them. They stay six feet apart the whole time. I mean, it's very, very difficult to live because we're not wired that way. We're wired to be connected. You may be familiar with that study from the late psychologist Harry Harlow, who did the studies uh, that wouldn't be done today, but there were studies on monkeys where he would let a monkey be uh, close to their mom and then about three months old or, or so he would pull him away and put him with a, a, uh, a wired monkey. 
and, uh, and, 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 and they would suffer loneliness. Here's an example of one. It was like a, a wire monkey with some, some mesh on it, and the monkey would cling to it, and, 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 and it, but, it would, but it would fall into depression. Uh, another study he did where it had two monkeys. One had some fur on it, no milk. The other one was just wire and had milk. The monkey would go in desperation to cling just so it could feel something that kind of represented warmth. Well, these, these monkeys, many of them would go into such depression, they wouldn't even come out of it. There is a parallel. Th that study showed that we're, in a way, we're, we need that same kind of thing. And so even though we're connected uh, through the internet in different ways, that vital connection, you know, when Jesus went around and, and, and prayed with people, he would touch them and he would embrace them and we see in the in the last supper that uh john was actually laying on on his shoulder or on his on his chest i mean they, they there was a closeness we need that and so that that's a loneliness that can be very very painful at first there was no one i could count on paul says here he's in isolation he's in a he's in a a, a home but he's in prison it's it's a it's, it's a home gel, and, and, and he says, there's nobody there who would stand with me. They all ran and abandoned me, but don't hold this against them. So he just feels abandoned. You know, it's a feeling because he actually says earlier in just a few verses that Luke is with him, but he just feels abandoned. It's the sense of loneliness. Here, King David also experienced that. Absalom was... Um, had his, his son had turned against him, was stealing his throne. He's on the run. Uh, there's a guy kicking dirt in his face. He's being socially isolated. And in that place, there, David writes, I'm depressed. I'm lonely, forgotten, and abandoned. If you're in that place where you're experiencing loneliness, you know how that can keep you from experiencing God's peace. And then lastly is stress. Stress, when we just have Lots of stress on our lives, lots of pressure. And I've talked to a number of you. You say you're working from home. That's very difficult for you. Your kids aren't in school, so they're running around the house. You're trying to be productive. You're trying to set boundaries. You're trying to make that work. And it's just incredibly stressful. You also have the stress of finances and all the other stresses that come along with that. Now, the Bible says the pressure has built up like lava beneath the earth. I'm a volcano ready to blow. Maybe that's some, how you, some of you feel like this. I don't know how long I can take this. Uh, and, and, and it might be a little while longer. I mean, pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there for he always tenderly cares for you. So God says there is a way that we can experience his peace that we, when, we experience, when we have worry, when we have disappointment, when we're experiencing loneliness, even stress, he goes, give it to me. Now, let's, how do you do that? Well, let's look at the three steps that we have to finding peace. Number one is equalize the pressure. Equalize the pressure. When I was a kid, I was at the ocean and I, I took my raft at low tide and tied it to a rock, waited till high tide, and so the rope was like 25, 30 feet down. I swam out to the raft, and then I thought, this is great. I can pull myself down real quick, and then I'll have the time to look around uh, at the coral. And so I did that, but I didn't understand about equalizing your pressure in your ears at the time. And so I had done that several times. I ended up having this horrendous earache, terrible pain the rest of the day, all that night tossing and turning, all this pain, because I didn't understand that when you have pressure like that, you've got to equalize your ears. I learned that later when I became a scuba diver and in my certification, they taught me that you hold your nose and you blow to keep counter pressure. That counter pressure opens up those tubes in your ear so that you're now comfortable. It equalizes the pressure when you're diving and, and scuba diving, when you're, as you go down in depth, you might need to do that several times. In fact, sometimes it doesn't even work right off the bat. You might have to come up a little bit because every time as you go down, you're getting more 
pressure on your body. The reverse happens when you, fl- when you go up high. When you're flying, if they didn't pressurize the cabin, part of it's so that you have oxygen. Another part is, is they pressurize it like a balloon with 14, 15 pounds of, actually I think it's like 12 pounds per square inch, so that you're comfortable because that's, what, that, that's the pressure of the atmosphere. Atmosphere is about 14.7 uh, pounds per square inch of, at sea level. So this idea of equalizing is very, very important so we are comfortable. Well, that principle is a principle called the law of equilibrium. In other words, external pressure must be counteracted with an internal force. The, when, the more pressure we have on us, whether it's worry or disappointment or loneliness or stress we're going to counter that with something and people it's like it's it's as you can see it is as stable as night and day i mean whenever people find themselves in those places of pressure they counteract it one of the ways is through alcohol i mean that's they drink and that's the way that they're counteracting all of that pressure they just drink and drink and drink there's other ways but uh certainly uh, there's, there's different types of drugs. Here's uh, the National Survey on Drug Use. I just looked this up for this, this past year for ages 12 and older. Marijuana is uh, a quarter of the, of the country of that population. Uh, the misuse of prescription drugs, cocaine, ecstasy, uh, methamphetamine, different ways that people are trying to cope with the pressure of life. And it's a counter. They're trying, it's that law of equilibrium. So th- these are certainly some ways. There's other ways that people, some people will uh, just watch binge TV, go gambling. Some people smoke. There's all kinds of things that people do. Now, the number one thing that people do to counter, to counter the pressure is by far is, is food. Food, eating food, and particularly comfort food, right? Comfort food is anything with sugar, fat, salt, uh, all of them, the more the better. And when we just stack that on, that, 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 what we're doing is we're counteracting the pressure. It's a coping mechanism, but that's what's happening. And so God says, that's really not going to give you peace. It's a temporary hit, but it's not going to give you the kind of peace that he wants to give you. That's the world's kind of peace. That's not the gift that he has that's different from the world. It says, do not get drunk on wine. So he's giving you one of those options. In fact, he's saying that this is really a lifestyle. Somebody who's, who's drinking, drinking a lot because they have a lot of pressure, and, uh, which leads to debauchery, which means uh, wasting away, ruin, uh, those kinds of things. Instead, be filled. This is the operative word, be filled with the Spirit. So he's talking about this law of equilibrium. When you have these kinds of pressures in your life, when you have loss, when you have grief, when you have the things we're talking about, worry and, 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 and discouragement and, and, and frustration and loneliness, and you can go to the go-to things you've done in the past and try to fill it up that way, or you can be filled with the Spirit. What does that mean to be filled with the Spirit? Well, it means when we invite Christ into our life and we let God's love into our life and the fruit of the Spirit into our life, God starts to operate in our life actively, not just passively, not just a prayer, which is a starting point for all of us. We pray to ask Christ into our life, but now we're starting to activate what God wants to do in our lives. And we let him start to be the boss. It says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's talking about God. The Holy Spirit that comes in us is a greater pressure, a greater equalizer when we're filled with God's presence than anything that the world can bring on us. That's what he's talking about. And so letting the the power of God in our lives. And that happens through prayer. That happens through prayer. It says, don't worry about anything. Now, that's hard to do, right? I fail that probably every day. Don't, but he's given, again, one of, those, one of those peace robbers. He says, don't worry about anything. He could have put in those other ones. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience what God's peace. He says, that's what he wants you to have, is God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. God says, I want to give you my peace. And it's your choice. You can either fall into worrying, fall into fretting, all those things, or you can receive God's peace through prayer. He says, you pray about it. You go to God and you talk to him. 
Talking to God is, 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 is tremendous. A, a number of years ago, I went to a, a stress seminar, how to reduce stress. It was only a one-day uh, one seminar. It was only, uh, I think it was like 100, and, 100 bucks or something like that. And uh, so this guy goes through all these different things on, on planning out your day and all these. At the end, he goes, listen, really the key to all of this is you need to find somebody who, can lis- who will listen to you. And we'll listen to you without any judgment and just kind of listen to you, uh, you know, whatever you have to say. And, uh, and he goes, the problem is there's no person who can do that, who can be an absolute perfect listener. And I thought I, I knew where he was going with it. And then he goes, that's why I recommend you get a pet and talk to your pet. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. That's, I mean, that, that's your end advice? Listen, I, if I talk until the cows come home to a hamster, that's not going to really do it for me. It, 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 Adam had a, mer, a whole bunch of animals he could have talked to, and, and, but God never told him to just go talk to the animals. No, we need to go talk to God. That's where we go. We talk to God because God can listen, but he can also do something about it where an animal can't. He can actually work on your behalf. And so we go and we talk to God. You know, it's interesting. If you were to go and tell a secular psychologist that you talk to your dog, they would think that you're emotionally well-balanced. But if you tell them that you talk to God, they're going to think you're delusional. But that's the world we live in. But God says, no, if you want peace, you go, you go to him. The next is to live in the present. Live in the present, right here and now. You see, when we experience a lot of frustration, when we're in this place of disappointment or or loneliness or stress, our tendency is to look back and think of the good old days, the glory days, uh, when, you know, we pull out the photo album and just spend all the time thinking about how great life was back, back then. Or we just dream about the future. When things are finally better, when I finally get the job I want, when this virus is finally over and all these, and we just, and we don't want to live in the moment, in the present. But God says, I want you to live in the present. He says, in the morning, you'll say, I wish we, it were evening. In the evening, you'll say, I wish it were morning. Afraid, terrorized at what's coming next. Afraid of the unknown. Afraid of the unknown because the sights you've witnessed. Certainly, we all see these things uh, on TV. I mean, we look and see what happened in Wuhan, China, or in, in Spain, or in Italy, or in, uh, in the New York, greater New York area. We see some of the reports coming. Uh, and that can be terrorizing. It's the unknown, what's happening. And there's a part of us that wants to either jump back or jump forward. But God says, no, I want you to stay right where you're at. Now listen, you and I, can live in the moment because we can trust that God will protect us. God will protect us. He will protect you. Psalm 91, the, one of the, the greats, one of the greats in Psalms, particularly for the, the protection of God, is found in 91, Psalm 91. And here's what it says uh, in, uh, in verse 11. It says, God sends his angels with special orders to protect you, to protect you, Wherever you go, defending you from all harm. Defending you from all harm. You go, well, what about the people that have already died? Uh, They contracted the coronavirus. They died. God didn't protect them. Well, listen, uh, that makes sense. That is human understanding. But what God wants us to do if we're going to get his peace is his divine wisdom. He says, I've got wisdom to give you. And he says that his wisdom is, is that he goes, I want to protect you. You know, it's interesting, this particular verse and the verse after it, Satan quotes. He quotes when he tempts Jesus. He takes Jesus out to the desert. You might remember that, the three temptations that happen out there. One of them, he takes Jesus to the temple, takes him to the highest part, which is 700 feet above. It's a direct drop down into the Kidron Valley. And he says, and he tempts him. He goes, says to Jesus, he goes, hey, if this is true, you can jump off that temple and you don't have to worry god will protect you see that's not at all what god's saying god's not saying to try to commit suicide he's not saying that we're supposed to be dumb and uh not not wear protective gear and and uh wear a mask if needed uh to clean the surfaces 
to watch what we're doing with our hands and not touch our face. I mean, and, then, and then just expect him to protect us. No, he says, no, you use the precautions, but you trust that God is going to watch over you. He's going to protect you. And, and it's the very thing that Satan wants you to not believe, to get you to doubt that God will not protect you because that doubts God's love because we protect those things that we love. God loves you, and so he says, I will protect you. That's something that you can bank on. I know God is going to protect me uh, in, in difficult situations. I've, I've been in places, uh, I, when I first started in ministry, I went and did hospital visits. I, d- I didn't really know what I was doing, and so a number of times I would go into the ICU where people had infectious diseases, and I didn't have protective equipment on and I would lay hands on them and pray for them and sometimes I forgot to even wash my hands and I never got a virus I never got infected God protected me I certainly believe that uh, I've learned my lesson I mean now I know better and so I'm certainly using all those precautions but even if you're exposed I believe God can protect you God will protect you I, I believe that uh, there was another time when I used to work at Costco uh, there was a, a, a guy there his name was Mark Bennett he did not like me, I think, because I was a believer. But, I mean, I tried to be, be kind to him and love on him. He was very antagonistic, always belitt- belittled my faith. Well, we had a cabinet where I worked at in the security department at the time where we would put our drinks. We'd get a drink at, br- at break time and then put our brank- drinks there. So one of my coworkers saw him spitting and, and, and licking my cup. It turns out he had, had, he had AIDS, and, uh, and in his advance, he had lost some weight, his gums were bleeding, and he was spitting in my cup trying to get me, uh, c- contaminate me, and cause me to get HIV. Uh, God protected me. It turns out he had been doing that for, for weeks, and nobody had caught him up until that point. But God protect, God will protect us because God loves us. And so that is something that we know is true about God. You know, the three temptations of Satan... Where, where, where he said, well, is God going to provide for you, you know, with the food? And uh, will God really provide for me? Will God really protect me? That's the one we just looked at. And then the last one, it's, will, God, will I really make a difference with my life if I serve God? Remember, he takes him up onto a mountain, shows him all the things he could have and all the things he could do with his life if he served Satan. And, and, and really is what he's saying is, is well, if you serve God, you're not going to really make a difference. These are the three core things that, that God says, no, I will provide for you. I will protect you, and you will make a difference. That gives us peace in our life. And then lastly is to trust God's plan. God does have a plan for you. He cares about you. He knows what's going on in your life. Uh, there's a great story here uh, with uh, in the psalmist there. Uh, in Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. You see, when the psalmist writes that, he's writing it for Hezekiah. Hezekiah is being advised by his prophet Isaiah. They're surrounded by the Assyrian army, the enemies. There's 185,000 enemies all around. They're, they're going to break into Jerusalem the very next day. There's only a wall that separates them. And, 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 he, and, and the psalmist says, no, you can trust that God will be your strength, your refuge, your ever-present help. That night, a plague hits the enemy troops, some virus or some, some uh, bacteria, something, some plague, and wipes out so many of them, they end up leaving, and they are protected. And so God has a plan. We don't always understand. Wouldn't you agree that sometimes it's hard to understand God's plan for us? But when you are in a difficult place and you need a why answered, it's going to keep you from getting the peace that God has for you. Part of finding peace is realizing, I don't need to know all of the whys. I don't need to know all of the whens or the hows. God's bigger than me. If I could understand all that, I would be God. And finding peace is recognizing that God has a plan, and it's a plan where he's going to provide for me, he's going to protect me, and he's going to help me to make a difference in this world. Last verse, this first verse, I, one of the first verses I, I memorized in the Bible because it's so, so powerful, really spoke to me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. Notice these four verbs. First, as you have trust, that we need to trust God. We trust him 
and, and even though it doesn't always make sense. God, I don't understand why you're doing things, but I'm going to trust you. We trust in his goodness. We trust that he cares about us. Lean not unto your own understanding. You, you're not going to always get it. You, it won't make sense. You can't always put, the, it's not a mathematical equation. You can't always put it together and make it make sense. Acknowledge him. One of the ways that we, I love to acknowledge him in our church body is through songs. When we sing, we're talking about God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's strength. God's, God's going God's gonna to be there for us. And we just lift up the name of God. What we're doing is we're acknowledging him. And he says, if you do those three things, you trust him, you don't lean under your own understanding, you acknowledge his goodness and his provision. He goes, then the last one is his promise to us. He will direct you. He will direct you. He'll give you the peace. He'll help calm your heart from all the worries, all of the disappointments and the loneliness and the stress and the pressure. When we go to God and we say, God, I need your help. I need your help. I need to, and trying to, and giving up on our attempts to equalize the pressure with whether it's food or whether it's some other coping mechanism, trying to fill that void try, because there's so much coming at us. Saying, God, I need to be filled with your presence. I need to be filled. And then living in the present. Saying, God, I can trust that you will protect me. I don't have to live in the past or in the future. And God, I know you have a plan for me. It's a good plan. And I want to trust you in, for, in, in, in let you have that peace uh, operate into my life. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, in every home or wherever somebody's listening to this or watching this, Lord, let your peace go forth. It's something you give. It's not something we earn not something we deserve. We can't work it up. It's something you give. And so I just pray, Father, let your peace reign. Lord, I pray for those who have overwhelming worries, that they would be able to release that. They don't have to worry. They can begin to pray about it. Let you have that. Put that at the foot of the cross. I pray for those who have disappointments. And some of those, the pain of that, the loss of that. Lord, let, I pray, Father, that you be there in their place of, of disappointment. Fill them up, Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are lonely, that we're not wired to be separated like that. So, Lord, I pray that, uh, that in the meantime, you fill them up with your presence. You give them the strength that they need. Lord, and I pray that you, you abate this virus quickly so that we can start to come and meet again as a church. We can start coming together in small groups. We can start coming together uh, in family systems and love on one another and care for one another and hug each other and all the things that we need. And Lord, I pray for those who are under enormous stress and pressure. Uh, their whole world has been turned upside down. Lord, I pray for them, Lord. Lord, help them to just experience the infilling of the presence of God. That is the first step, my friend. Why don't you do that right now? Just say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me up. I want that to be my equalizing force from all the things that are happening. You go, how do you do that, Andy? Well, you just call out to God right now and just say, God, fill me up. If you've never done it before, just, that's, just make that first step. Say, God, I commit my life to you. I want to I want to I want to serve you. I want to follow you. I trust in your provision. Would you say God, I trust in your protection? And I trust that I will make a difference with my life if I serve you and follow you. I believe, would you say God, I believe that you have a good plan for me. And I don't have to understand it all because I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I'm going to acknowledge that you have a good plan and that you love me and care for me. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed with me, would you let me know about it? I mean, certainly some of you, uh, you know, God wants to do more in your life. And so you can receive more prayer right now. If you would, just there's, a, there's uh, at the bottom uh, right, you can see there it says, uh, I would like to receive prayer. You can click on that and we will chat with you. And we have some prayer counselors that would love to, to pray in a chat format with you. Uh, also, if you committed your life to Christ, let us know about that. 
uh, we're having people every weekend, you know, online, there's, they're, there's, they're, they're saying, yes, I want to raise my hand. I want to, I want to, I, I, I committed my life to Christ. And we'd love to know about that so that we can continue to pray for you. We'd like to be able to reach out to you as well. And so thank you for coming. We miss you, Sharon, and I miss you so much. We, 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 we are praying for you. We love you. Uh, and uh, we encourage you to continue to stay plugged in. We're encouraging uh, people to call one another. If you have people in your contact list, uh, go and call them, text them, reach out to them. We'd also like to invite you to be part of our church financially. We, uh, we, and this is the way that, we, uh, that we're encouraging you to do it, texting 45777 VCC, and you can put your amount in. Uh, of course, there's some other ways to give as well. Thank you so much for supporting uh, what we're doing. We're able to reach a number of people. We had somebody who gave several thousand dollars in gift cards to restaurants that we're able to give out to people that are in need. So we're, ben- we're blessing some of the local restaurant owners that are in difficulties, as well as helping people out in our community that need that. That was a very creative idea. I love that. Thank you uh, for, for, for that, as well as other types of, of gifts that are coming in. The Lord bless you. I love being part of the answer uh, to some of the challenges that are going on in our society and in our community. Uh, the Lord bless you, and I will see you next week. Thank you for joining us on our Vineyard Church stream. If you prayed that prayer with Pastor Andy, we want to hear about it. We want to support you. We believe that it's the best decision that you can make. If you're on the Church Online platform, click that button that says, I committed my life. And that will take you to a Connect Card option where we will be able to send you information and support this new decision. If you're on Facebook, let us know in the chat or send us a private message. We would like to send you the same information. Hey, if you call Vineyard Church your home, you can actually give online right at our website, vineyardchurch.com, or you can text. You can text 45777-VCC plus the amount and give right there on your phone. We have been doing so much in our community. Just because the building is closed doesn't mean that we're not reaching out with our food pantry, financial resources, and giving people food gift cards so they can eat during this season. If you'd like to support that, just click the COVID-19 option. And hey, we also want to pray for you. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, send those in. We know it's a crazy time. We want to support you spiritually. You can send those to vccprayers at gmail.com or right there on our website, vineyardchurch.com. Just click prayer. If you're on the church online platform, you can actually get live prayer right now by clicking the prayer button. You'll immediately be connected with one of our prayer team members who'd love to pray for you right now. Stay connected with us on social media. You can follow us at Vineyard VA on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. But hey, we're doing this next week. We'll see you right here on this platform next week. Invite somebody out. We'll see you then.